Chemostats are biological CSTRs which are used to maintain a stable continuous culture volume of a target microorganism for research. Let's start by labeling the parts of the chemostat. Most importantly, we have the growth chamber, and this is where our target organism lives. This specific chemostat is culturing Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The growth chamber is connected to the waste beaker, where nutrients and end-of-life products are exiting the chemostat constantly. Next, we have the media chamber, where fresh liquid media is constantly being added. Notice there is no bacterial growth in the media chamber. This is a sterile environment. A peristaltic pulp is used to initiate flow from the media chamber into the growth chamber. We can control the direction, whether it's counterclockwise or clockwise flow, and we can control the speed of the flow with this pump. Air filters connected to the tops of both the growth chamber and the media chamber. Both the growth chamber and the media chamber sit on top of stir plates. This ensures that the concentration inside both of these chambers is homogeneous and uniform. There is a bubble break above the growth chamber to ensure that there is no backflow out of the growth chamber and into the media chamber. The flow is one way from the media into the growth. You're going to start by washing the chemostat equipment with first a 10% bleach solution. To do this efficiently, we can start by turning on the pump and allowing the pump to flow the bleach solution throughout the chemostat. After we have rinsed with the 10% bleach solution, we are now going to rinse the chemostat with DI water. After the chemostat has been rinsed, it will be autoclaved. The chemostat equipment will be autoclaved fully assembled. All parafilm around the tubing and around the lids will be removed. Parafilm cannot withstand the heat in the autoclave and will melt. Before autoclaving, a clamp will be placed on the growth chamber to prevent an influx of air entering the chemostat after we have removed it from the autoclave. Remember to use the correct autoclave setting and place autoclave tape on the chambers of the chemostat. Also, be sure to use an appropriate autoclave safe secondary container to hold your solids equipment. Now to create the media that it goes inside of the chemostat. We are going to use MD media. This media is a solution of DI water and high ionic salts. MD solution will also need to be autoclaved in order to be sterilized. Make sure to place your media solutions into a secondary autoclave safe container. Also, divide any full bottles, such as the 1 liter Pyrex bottles, into two 500 milliliter vessels. Remember to unscrew any tight caps and always use autoclave tape to indicate whether the autoclave run was successful. While the autoclave is running, make a streak plate of the desired organism. In this case, it is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. After you've created your streak plate, you can leave it to sit in the 37C room to incubate for 24 hours. Once the autoclave has finished running, consolidate your MD media and remove your chemostat equipment with caution. After the equipment has cooled, you can parafilm the tubing connectors. Parafilming the tubing connectors ensures that there is no air leak from the tubes connecting the media chamber to the growth chamber. The MD media has been sterilized but it is not complete. The ingredient glucose is a sugar and cannot be autoclaved because it will crystallize under high heat. Instead, a glucose solution is filter sterilized at a concentration of 20 grams per liter and then added to the MD media. The MD media now contains 950 milliliters of water, 50 milliliters of a glucose solution, and various salt species. Using aseptic technique, the new MD solution is added to both the growth chamber and the media chamber. In the growth chamber, it is only added up to the outlet height. The clamp on the growth chamber is left on. The tops of both the growth chamber and the media chamber are parafilmed shut to maintain sterility. Both stir plates are turned on and set to the setting of 4. At this point, there is no bacterial growth and the chemostat will sit for 24 hours to ensure no contamination. After 16 of the 24 hours have passed, we can now create an inoculated liquid culture of our target organism from the streak plate we had created earlier. Always using aseptic technique by wiping down our bench and lighting a Bunsen burner, we can grab an isolated colony from our streak plate and inoculate the isolated colony into 5 milliliters of our MD solution. 
Always use aseptic technique when working with bacteria. Work close to the flame and keep your agar plate closed. Add your isolated colony to the 5 milliliters of your MD solution in the test tube. Quickly flame your loop and then cap your solution to maintain sterility. When grabbing colonies from a streak plate, be sure not to puncture the agar. Lightly scrape the surface. Vortex the liquid culture to create a homogeneous concentration. Then incubate your liquid culture of the target organism, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, in a shaker tray for 8 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. After the 8 hours incubation period, your liquid culture should appear cloudy with growth. Pseudomonas bacteria has a very distinct odor. The distinct smell of Pseudomonas can be used to verify that the correct organism has grown in your culture. After the chemostat has ran for 24 hours with media only, the growth chamber is inoculated with one milliliter of the liquid culture sample we had just prepared. When adding the bacteria sample to your growth chamber, always use aseptic technique and flame the lid of the growth chamber. Remember to re-parafilm the lid of the growth chamber. Now that the chemostat growth chamber has been inoculated with bacteria sample, allow the growth chamber to grow for 24 hours in batch mode. There will be no flow, the pump will be turned off, and the clamp on the outside of the growth chamber will remain shut. After the 24 hours of running in batch mode, flow is initialized. The outlet clamp is removed and waste products can now move into the waste chamber. The speed of the peristaltic pump can be controlled to control the flow rate of the chemostat. After the chemostat setup is complete and run for 24 hours, about one residence time, an OD concentration curve can be identified by taking a spot plate of the chemostat sample. The chemostat will now supply a continuous sample of your target organism. The target organism for this chemostat is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. To maintain the chemostat, never let the media chamber go below 400 milliliters. This means that fresh MD plus glucose must constantly be added to the chemostat using aseptic technique. The adjacent waste beaker must also be constantly emptied and sterilized with a bleach solution. The chemostat must be maintained with aseptic technique. If there is growth in your media chamber, this means that aseptic technique has been compromised and contamination of your chemostat has occurred. We must stop this chemostat because it is no longer a pure culture of the target organism.